Welcome to Slasher Sunday. No, I didn't forget about it. Um, you know, I usually put up Slasher Sunday at like midnight my time, which like midnight Sunday morning, like the second Sunday starts. And right now it's eight o'clock on Sunday, you know, night. So for right now, it is still Slasher Sunday. So for anyone who thinks I missed it, I did not miss it. Here I am. Let's do this. It is uh, before they were Stars Week in Killer Flicks. So I couldn't help but do Cutting Class starring Bradley Pitt right there. No, he's actually just Brad Pitt in this. Um, I haven't seen it in forever. I had to break out the VHS copy for it. The freaking opening of this, like five minutes. I didn't think I was even going to be able to watch it. I was looking for like a good version of it on YouTube. So that, because it was like really messed up. And I was like, oh shit. And I kept switching. I must have switched through like five different copies on, on uh, YouTube. They were all dreadful. They were so like poor quality. I could not t make out anybody. Like, I don't even know if I would have noticed it was Brad Pitt, to be completely honest. So I watched up to a certain point on the YouTube, like five, 10 minutes in. And then I fast forwarded to that part, hoping that the tape would not be all screwed up there. And it wasn't. So the rest of the movie was totally clear, VHS clear anyway. And uh, so I got to watch it like that, uh, which is a shame because there is a scene where uh, Jill Sholin, Sholin, right? That's how you say her name? Um, <clears throat> from Stepfather. Oh man, I love her character in Stepfather. Um, but there is a scene at the beginning where she like comes out in like a white t-shirt, just like right to like her butt cheek like level and she like runs out and she's holding it down. It's adorable, she's so pretty. Um, and I was like, why does this have to be so staticky? Why is this so messed up? How, what a shame. And then the YouTube versions were off. Yeah, I kept looking for a better, cleaner version of that shot because I'm me. That's why. So let's talk about the movie itself. Now we've got Donovan Leach here from The Blob. We have got Roddy McDowell from Planet of the Apes and um, also from uh, Class of 1984, which I've said before in that review, I did all three of those, 1984, 1999, and uh, 1999 Part 2, or Class of, should I say. Uh, he was the best part of 1984, I or Class of 1984, since there is a 1984 film, I guess I should specify. Um, and he plays a principal here, uh, so he was a teacher in, the, in that one, and he's a principal here, but he's in high school. So it just kind of reminded me of that. Uh, well, first thing I want to say about this movie is, A, it's not very good. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't write down a ton because I was kind of bored through a lot of it. It's not terrible. It's just whatever. Like, a lot of the typical slasher things that I'm looking for, because the story isn't all that interesting, aren't here. There's really no gore. Uh, there's a close-up of tits for like two seconds in a locker room, and that's about it. Um, so you got no tits, you got no gore, you have got no really super interesting characters. The characters are okay. Like, I don't dislike the characters. I'm not going to sit here and be like, there's no character. Like, the characters are fine. I, I wasn't finding myself super into them, but um, I, I won't trash them either. But as I said, because, of, you know, the story was very minimal... And there was no gore, there was no this and that. Like, the characters being mild, bland, whatever, uh, that just couldn't carry the film for me. Uh, but yeah, the first thing I definitely wanted to say about this was that all of the adults in this show, in this movie, are horrible. Like, they're just terrible people. It's funny how, uh, like, the, the principal is a total, uh, you know, pervert, and the janitor is constantly like threatening to beat people up and it's funny right here oh here it is here it is i'm getting a i'm getting a notification right now with with uh retro or not retro um freaking ray robinson blasting me where the hell is slasher sunday <laughs> see see what happens oh that's funny i'm making it right now ray okay you're gonna be watching this in like 20 or 30 minutes don't you worry well You'll be watching it now when you know what I mean. All right. 
Um, but yeah, like every single freaking adult in this movie, besides her dad, which her dad just kind of spends this time roaming the countryside trying to find his way back to the house. Uh, he's like freaking homeward bound the incredible journey. <laughs> he just needed like a, a dog and a cat following him around. He got a little adventures of Milo and Otis going on here with the dad. Um, and I don't know if this was, I looked on every version, like the, the YouTube versions on the tape, everything. There's so many points of this film where everything feels like it's sped up to like 1.5 times normal speed. It was really weird. You know, like those chase scenes in car, you know, like, like a car chase in a movie and they speed it up to make it look faster. It's like that, but during scenes that don't need that. It's just people walking or talking or whatever. And they're like moving around, they're frantic and there's just like nothing's right. And I was like, is this my tape? And then I was looking in the different versions and even though it was kind of blurry, you could just tell it was like sped up, sped up, sped up. <laughs> um, I thought that was very weird. And, um, oh man, I mean, even though the kills are pretty lame, there is this there's this uh, art teacher who gets cooked in one of those like um, molding ovens or whatever, the, you know, the, the clay, or they pop them in the oven. Oh my God, what a horrible way to die. Just being cooked in an oven alive like that. Jesus Christ, dude, no one deserves that. That's insanity. Um, so Paula, who is the main character here, is dating Dwight, Brad Pitt's character. And Brian, the Donovan Leach character, is like this weird kid and uh, people start to die so they blame him. And so as the movie's going on, they like sneak into the uh, freaking school after hours to try to look up his file to see what the hell really happened to him. Um, earlier in the movie, uh, Jill, or well I should say Paula's tells Dwight, Brad Pitt's character, that uh, if he wants to get laid, he better up his grades. I've never, now that is a hell of a tactic. See, parents need to jump on that shit right there. Like, they're all about, oh, we well, don't have sex, this and that. No, 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 no. You go to their girlfriend and you say, look, you can fuck my kid, but only when he has straight A's. <laughs> okay? Don't get pregnant. Okay, I'll provide the condoms, I'll provide the birth control, all of it. But you do not fuck this kid unless he has straight A's. Okay? Now, that is one hell of a tactic. I don't have boys, so I don't think girls care as much as guys in high school. So I don't think I could go to their boyfriends. Plus, I wouldn't. I would be like, you fuck my kids. <laughs> and you won't be getting straight A's or any grades because you'll be fucking dead. No. Uh, just kidding. Um, so they find out that he was in a mental institution and that he had like shock therapy, um, every single day that he was there. And Brad Pitt's character actually, or Dwight, seems really like sympathetic to that in that moment, they're like, how, how could they do that to him? And I think that's just kind of playing off the fact that they used to be friends and he feels bad for the guy, but he kind of sticks to his uh, bullying ways. And then the next day they photocopy the thing. His friend photocopies it to be fair, but they bring it in. And then during class, when the teacher has his back turned, they all like the whole class, like starts shaking, like they're being shocked to make fun of him, which really doesn't amount to much. He doesn't get upset. He doesn't really seem to even care in that moment. So it's kind of an odd moment in the film. I feel like he should have been like walked out of the room or like something so that we noticed it actually affected him. But maybe it actually works even more because he's so unaffected by it, which would make sense seeing, seeing as how he does end up being the killer. Which I actually really liked because he's like the red herring throughout the film. And it's one of those really heavy handed ones where you're like, okay, well, he's not going to be the killer because they show that he is. And it's very obvious that he's going to be. And then they're going to flip it and it's going to be Brad Pitt. It's going to be Jill Schoen. It's going to be the principal. It's going to be whatever. And then at the end, it's like, oh no, it was the kid you had suspected all along. But they throw you like just towards the end into believing that it's Brad Pitt. Um, 
which is cool. I think that's actually one of the better aspects of the film is to, you know, really like make it obvious who the killer is, then like flip it on you for like a minute and you're like, ah, I should have, like, I knew they were going to do that and then flip it back and they're like, oh my God, he really is the killer. So I thought that that was some fun little sleight of hand there. Um, and, but making fit of a, fun of a kid for being a, like put in a mental institution and having electroshock therapy. Wow. That's some fucking cold shit, man. Um, and we get like a serious tit tease in this movie by uh, Jill Sholin's friend, the, the, the cheerleader chick. She like pulls off her top and like half of her boobs are sticking out from under her bra. Very weird. It looks odd to me. I don't know. Maybe that's a normal thing, but I noticed that. And I was like, oh, we're going to get it. No. Nope. And then she goes, you know, commando under the skirt and she's going, she's flashing her ass to all the kids in the school. And uh, then she's being pulled under the bleachers by her boyfriend and you think it's the killer and then it ends up actually being her boyfriend but then the boyfriend gets killed and she's screaming under the bleachers like reaching out and everyone like the band's playing and the you know music has just started blaring so no one can see it and she's like screaming and reaching out and they're like got a close up on her it's a great shot i really like that i like the idea of like this kid under the bleachers no one's noticing him even though they're like right there even though her best friend knows she's under there and she just thinks that she's down there having sex or whatever. I thought that that was actually a really good uh, moment. I want to say that's in that movie Student Bodies, the, the parody movie, but I could be wrong on that. I haven't seen that in forever. I'd like to cover that. I have a hard time talking about comedies because I just don't want to talk about the jokes the whole time and that's really what all the movie is. <sighs> Can you see that? Like, am I sweating? Jesus Christ, dude. I need to get like a fucking... Um, air conditioner in here. I like when they send uh, Brian to the principal's office after him and Brad Pitt kind of get into it. And when she gives him his ultimatum, he's like, I would rather suck donkey dick. Like, I really, I just kind of like how cold he is. And, and it really does fit the fact that he is the, the killer at the end. Like, all of his, like, his attitude throughout the film all adds up to that he is the killer. And as I said, they it's very heavy handed, but when it does end up work, you know, when it does end up, it does. Uh, another kill in here uh, that reminds me of something else is the American flag under the trampoline. Uh, I'm sure you know what I'm gonna say here. Uh, if you're a horror fan like I am, I'm guessing if you're watching this channel, you've watched a shitload of horror. Um, a sla uh, one of the greatest slasher films to never happen. Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. How fantastic was that freaking shirt, like, you know, topless cheerleader jumping on the trampoline, coming down, pussy on a fucking, you know, butcher's knife <laughs> scene. Everyone was like, oh, even, you know, that was just, oh, man, awesome stuff. And just same thing, flagpole, he comes down on it and just impales him. So, of course, it reminds me of that. Um, and... Brian's like crazy guy at the end is laughably terrible. He keeps calling people like Yankee Doodle. It's so bad. Like when Brad Pitt and him are like breaks in and he's like, you guys are Yankee Doodle, blah, blah. It's, <laughs> it's so how he kept a straight face saying that. Like who wrote that dialogue is what I want to know. And was like, yeah, totally. This will work. I do like how Brad Pitt thinks like he has this moment because uh, he wants to add sodium to the water for it to blow up. Um, if you want to see a version of that, you can watch 1988's The Brain. I covered that for Monster Monday on here. I've mentioned it really recently, actually, for some other movie. Um, but he kid throws like pure sodium in the toilets and flushes it and blows up the freaking school's water system. Uh, I love that movie. Uh, but Brad Pitt thinks he's going to blow him up with this sodium rock and so he comes in and he says something like uh burn or something and he throws it on the ground and it just like slides and does nothing and he's like you weren't paying attention in class i thought that was a really fun little anticlimactic because it's like it's like a smile you son of a bitch moment where roy Scheider shoots the shark and it blows up well he shoots the oxygen tank which would never work um 
but it's just it's just one of those moments and it doesn't work and it's awesome so i, I really liked that um and <sighs> her closing speaking of like a, a freaking smile you son of a bitch moment she has hers where when he's he is like she he wants her to take her clothes off or something she's like close her eyes close your eyes and he's like you wouldn't lie to me would you you wouldn't hurt me and she's like no i wouldn't so he finally closes her eyes and she fucking buries a hammer in his head and she says um what is it freaking um no more fucking around with my emotions <laughs> Yeah, oh, there, there's a good fucking fun line. Um, and yeah, the even the janitor has his line when he comes in and he sees what they're doing and he's like, "What is this killing class?" Oh, there's some really bad lines in here. I I should edit them in here, but I honestly don't know how I'd get them. I don't know how I'd get clips of that and throw them on here because I don't have anything clear enough and I can't record off my VHS. I don't know what the hell to do. I could record it on my phone, but that'd be some shh fucking uh, rinky dink shit so the dad finally makes it out of the of the wilderness or whatever after the kids like walk past him as he's dying like his own daughter and you think that he's dying throughout the film but he seems to be totally fine i guess um and he's running back and and the brakes are cut and you think they're gonna run into the dad which honestly i think would have been a fantastic ending just having these kids think they get away with it and then she comes down the brakes are cut and she smashes into the dad killing him like maybe he like flew up on the hood and she sees that he's like laying there dead and she's like dad and then they like hit a pole and blow like i don't know about blow up but you know uh die i that would have been a much funnier grim ass ending <laughs> i know i just said that's funny but for me it would have been um but this one like they stop right in front of him and then he comes up to her and they make like this sitcom type joke ending where he's like Honey, have you been cutting class? And then it like cuts the credits. Wow, whose fucking decision was that? Oh my god. They should have used him as a like a stunt double and fucking actually killed him. That was a terrible, terrible idea. Wow, what a stupid, stupid decision. Um, it's something else I was gonna say about this, but um, I don't think. God damn. Oh, the talent scout pressure. Just Brad Pitt's character just being like pummeled by his father into being that uh, kid who's going in front of the talent scout, and uh, it's so typical. Like you've seen it in a million fucking things at this point, but it gives a little bit to his character. You see why he's so hard on everyone, why he's such a goof off, why he's doing all this stuff. So um, it, it does show some character development, uh, but God, I've seen it so many times. Uh, so it just is whatever, but I went through that personally. I completely understand it, and I hate it when I see it because it takes me back to that that terrible fucking time in my life. Um, so even though I'm over it and I've seen it too many times, it does always kind of hit me in that place. Um, I think that's it. Um, as I said, overall whatever i wasn't big on this one but it was fun to revisit and to see brad pitt in an early role and and it isn't like um you know george clooney in a return to horror high or a, a um charlie Theron in like children of the corn three something like that two or three um where they're only in it for like a minute or two uh george clooney's in it for maybe five minutes but this is like brad pitt is fucking main character he's like the top three he's on the fucking cover and warranted that he's on the cover this was before brad pitt had a name so they put him on the cover for a reason he is one of the main characters so it's good to see like a star you know this is like a leprechaun or something where jennifer aniston is the main character of the movie so you get to see her the entire film it's not just like a little stupid cameo so anyways all right so there's slasher sunday uh you happy ray are you fucking happy all right, guys.